Platin Monaco 5.1 plus Wysa Sound Send. Just imagine my hands aren't there and it's on a super cool turntable. This hockey puck of a wireless transmitter is a game changer. Previously, the system came with an Axum Link, which could only connect exclusively to 2019 or newer LG OLED or NanoCell TVs or an Xbox via USB. But now, the Wysa Sound Send can now connect to any smart TV that features ARC, audio return channel, or even eARC, enhanced audio return channel. Wait, if it supports eARC, doesn't that mean? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, wireless Dolby Atmos. And no need for a receiver. Let's get into it. Welcome my friends, my name is Elon Osborne and this is my YouTube channel where I talk about movies, audio, and music. But more specifically, I'll be reviewing the Platin Monaco 5.1 home theater system with Wysa SoundSend tuned by THX. Wait, Wysa? What the heck is Wysa? I have this video here where I go into a little bit more detail. But in a nutshell, Wysa is the most trusted, most awarded leader in wireless home theater applications. With the new SoundSend specifically being named CES 2021 Innovation Awards Honoree and having just won the Impact Award from Digital Trends. So it's definitely sending sound waves to the home theater community, am I right? Terrible joke. You're right. I know. And I know some of you might be thinking, Big deal, everything's wireless nowadays. Wysa is honestly a step above everyone else in the wireless department, providing uncompressed, high-res, 24-bit, 96 kilohertz audio, up to eight channels. Eight channels means you can have up to a traditional 7.1 system, or now even a 5.1.2 configuration. And since I wanted to hear that for myself, with this only being a 5.1 speaker system, I tested not only a traditional 5.1 configuration, but also a 3.1.2 configuration just for kicks. Just to tell you up front though, I am not being paid by, nor is this video sponsored by Wysa. But they were kind enough to send me this Platin Monaco 5.1 system. So I will give it an honest review. So thank you, Wysa. Now, what's in the box? Here we go. Stop. Little quick start guide. This is the cord corner. Corner of cords. This is the sound send. Wireless home cinema audio transmitter. So right on the box it says it supports Dolby Atmos 3.1.2 or 5.1.2 configurations. So that's cool. We got one, two, three, four satellite speakers and one center channel. I'm gonna need to get creative with this. Silica gel. Don't eat this. And here is the subwoofer. It's hefty, man. Inside the sound send box is a USB cable with a power adapter, the sound send itself, and it even comes with an HDMI cable. As you can see, unlike the Axum link, the sound send now has an HDMI port, optical port for those who need that additional support, and USB. Although another difference between the Axum link and the new sound send is that the USB port is strictly just for power. But at least HDMI and optical options are available now. And the other thing to note is that there's one power cable that is different from the rest. And that's the one for the subwoofer. Since the sub is low profile, it requires the power cord with the 90 degree elbow on it. So just to recap the box contents, we got six power cords, one sound send. What about the silica gel? Nobody cares, silica gel. Four satellites, one center, and one subwoofer. And here's the uh, uh, silica, come on, get out of here, jeez. And here's the whole fam family together. Aww. Simple, right? The build quality is solid, not feeling super cheap or thin. The soft touch matte black finish is very sleek. The four satellites are small, but just feel pretty hefty in your hand. The center channel has a pair of the same two and a half inch drivers like the satellites, as well as a soft dome tweeter. The low profile subwoofer has a six and a half inch driver inside a ported enclosure. The entire system boasts a total power output of 270 watts. What? Precisely.
It's too bad the system doesn't come with the option of putting grills on the faces. Kinda like my Klipsch speakers. But that's a pretty minor complaint. According to the literature provided in the box, first decide where you're going to put the speakers. When I was first planning the speaker arrangement in my head, since they are roughly the same size as my Klipsch satellites, I figured I would temporarily use the same wall mounts for my Klipsch and put the Platin Monaco speakers in their place. But the Monacos don't have a rear mounting hole. It is only on the bottom. And up until now, I didn't really have a reason to have speaker stands. So that was a little bit of a bummer. Because as you can see, I have a bit of a unique setup where the TV mount is up fairly high on the wall with an in-wall center channel underneath. This is how it was already when we moved into this house in 2017. Work with what you got, right? So I remembered that the wall mounts that I currently use are able to withstand 22 pounds. I then ever so gently placed each of the Monaco satellites on top of the Klipsch's to keep my soundstage nice and wide which is just what I prefer. The center channel posed another problem though, because as you can see here, it doesn't have a mounting hole anywhere. So I guess it's meant to be set in or on top of a TV stand. So I did the next best thing and took my keyboard stand, put a piece of wood on it for my garage and covered it with a red tablecloth. Lastly, since it was already set up this way when we moved in, the subwoofer went up here on this shelf near the ceiling. Whew. So. Now that we had all the speakers in place, now it's time to plug them into power. Once again, the quick start guide recommends to plug them into the speaker first, then the outlet. I had to get some extension cords and power strips to make it all work, but in the end, I got it done. Don't forget to turn on the subwoofer since it is the only speaker in the system that has a power switch. The next step is to plug in an HDMI cable into the sound send, plug the other end of the HDMI cable into the TV, making sure to plug it into the port that says ARC. Plug the provided USB cable into the back of the sound send, connect it to the power adapter, and plug that into an outlet. Luckily I have this outlet already in the wall, so in it goes. Once it has power, it will search for the speakers, which is indicated by this blinking hazy green light. And once it has synced, the light will go solid. Then I turn on my LG C9 OLED, hit the gear icon on the remote, go to all settings, audio, and make sure to choose ARC as the audio output. And don't forget, since the SoundSend now supports eARC over HDMI, you can plug your next-gen gaming console or 4K Blu-ray player into your TV and then listen to uncompressed Dolby Atmos tracks via the SoundSend. Nice. Next, download the Wise's SoundSend app for iOS or Android, open it up and allow for Bluetooth communication. It will search for the SoundSend and there we go, connected. It immediately goes to this first tab where you can change the volume output of each individual speaker. The speaker settings tab allows you to make any speaker give out a short chime to make sure it's in the right position. But also check out the speaker map. As you can see, since this is a 5.1 system, we got our front left, center, front right, subwoofer, surround left, and surround right. In the audio settings page, we can choose the audio source to be either HDMI ARC or optical. Manually change the lip sync up to a 200 millisecond delay. Change between normal, movie, music, or night audio modes. Turn surround virtualization on or off. And the remaining options act as a basic equalizer, being able to adjust high, mid-range, voice, mid-bass, and subwoofer frequencies. In the advanced settings tab, we have speaker configuration, speaker map, my zone, scan for speakers, factory reset, audio format, and device version. My zone is the best part about this tab since you can specify just how far away your listening position is from each individual speaker. This allows for precise timing of sound being sent out to each speaker so that they are all in sync and hitting your ears at the same time. My situation is unique since I sit pretty far away from the TV. So I got my measuring tape out and discovered that I was 13 feet away from the center channel, 15 feet away from the front left and right speakers, 15 feet away from the sub, and 11 feet away from the surrounds. Side note. Since this system doesn't connect to Wi-Fi, it's a little disappointing that you can't actually use this system as a standalone music player, which you can do with most soundbars. These speakers are dependent upon the TV being turned on. So you can easily listen to music if you go to the Spotify app on your TV, for example. So it's not like you can't listen to music at all. It's just something you want to be aware of. How do they sound? 
Right off the bat, even though I can have that subwoofer high up on the shelf, it was apparent immediately that this low profile six and a half inch driver just was not gonna cut it being way up there. So since there is an outlet here on the floor, I moved the sub beneath this side table. I also went back into the MyZone portion of the SoundSend app and changed the distance between the subwoofer and me to five feet instead of 15. And let me tell you, that was a great improvement. It filled in the low frequencies quite nicely in most situations. But compared to my eight inch Klipsch subwoofer with its gigantic cube shaped housing, it just didn't have that punch. Like when I did an A-B test of the gunshots in the underground tunnel scene from John Wick 2. Nor did it have the chest rumbling subsonic frequencies heard in the intro to Blade Runner 2049. Also, when I was watching Rogue One, the subwoofer gave nice deep rumbles when ships would fly by the screen, but was rather weak when it counted during explosions. Weird, right? Dialogue came through the center channel nice and clear though. Not as crisp and bright as I tend to like it, but definitely a step above a lot of soundbars that I've heard. Especially since it's a dedicated center channel that is placed away from the left and right front speakers. So there's less crosstalk or bleed from other nearby speakers. The surround sounded great, providing the immersive atmospheric effects that I expected. But just for curiosity's sake, I also arranged these speakers in a 3.1.2 configuration, which is an option in the SoundSend app. And let me tell you, 3.1.2 is actually really cool. I'd never experienced the wall of sound before. In real talk, I think I might have liked it a little bit better than having speakers behind me. It just broadens the sound stage surrounding your TV, and it just makes it sound bigger. And on top of that, the subwoofer sounded like it actually performed better in this configuration. In the 5.1 configuration, the subwoofer was between me and the right surround sound speaker. So maybe there was some wireless crosstalk or maybe some signal degradation to a little degree. I'd have to run more tests to be sure. But when all the speakers were surrounding the TV and not surrounding the room, making the sub isolated away from them all, it sounded better. It still didn't provide that punch that was lacking, but I definitely did notice it more in some of the same demo scenes that I had previously watched. But putting it into that 3.1.2 configuration was not pretty. If you have some shelves surrounding your TV that go all the way up to the ceiling, awesome. Then you can definitely do this 3.1.2 configuration and be able to hide all of the power cords pretty well. Otherwise, you gotta get real creative on how you're gonna mount stuff way up there and not only hide the power cords, but also extension cords because having them way up there, those six foot long power cords that come with the speakers just aren't gonna cut it. But you could decide to get an additional pair of WISA certified speakers. So then you could have that wall of sound around your TV and have two speakers behind you, creating a full 5.1.2 surround sound system, which the SoundSend supports. Recap. The most impressive part about this Platin Monaco system, we're not dealing with the limited footprint of a soundbar. Yet, it's as simple to connect as a soundbar. And having that freedom of placing the speakers far apart from each other gives it an unrivaled, wide, discrete soundstage. And again, without the need of a receiver. So who is this system for? Well, it definitely would be an advantage if you have a very wide TV stand that you can put the speakers on or shelving that is surrounding your TV. So then you have plenty of cubbies or different surfaces to put the speakers on and also to hide all of those power cords. This system would be very impressive in a small or medium sized living room, especially if your couch is back up against the back wall. And even though in a living room like mine, which is very open concept, it definitely held its own, having a nice wide soundstage that I like. It's just that that subwoofer is not powerful enough for a large living room. When testing this, I did run into some syncing issues from time to time, where without warning, when testing all these different configurations, I would turn the TV back on and then I couldn't hear any sound. If I had that trouble, what seemed to work most often, but not always, was to go into my TV settings, switch to the TV's internal speakers, and then back to ARC. So when dealing with a wireless system, there's always that inherent possibility of having to troubleshoot something at some point. Again, yes, you don't have to deal with speaker wire in this setup, but you still need to find creative ways to hide a lot of power cords. 
But the fact that you can make this wireless system have a sound stage as big or as small as you want, and it supports eARC and Dolby Atmos, it is a very unique and very cool option in the sub $1,000 category of home theater audio. So there you have it folks. Is this system right for you? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss another review like this one. And of course, always be listening.